going. So this is probably one of the most long-awaited videos that I'm ever going to make and I think it's going to be quite a lengthy video. So grab yourself a tea, grab yourself a snack and I'm just going to get straight into the video and tell you everything from the very beginning. I did have a cup of coffee for myself somewhere, I think it's gone missing. part of the video I'm going to talk to you all about how I got my job, applying, looking around, the interview process and how I came to pick this job etc and in my second video I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about what the job actually is, what it consists of, what my role requires just because I know a lot of you guys who are watching this are within the whole like medical biomedicine research field so I do get quite a few questions from you guys asking me all those kinds of questions. So finally I'm going to sit down and I'm going to make that video. So I'm going to divide this video up into three parts. First one being a little bit of background, the second one being the application process and the third being the interview. So let's start with a little bit of background. I think the majority of you who are watching this probably already know me and a little bit of my history based on my other videos but in case you are new here, welcome! My name is Atisa, I'm 24 and currently I work at King's College London as a research technician. Now I work as part of St John's Dermatology however the role itself is within the Division of Cancer Studies and most of the work that I do is predominantly based on cancer and oncology. Now I did my first degree in biomedical sciences and that was at Newcastle University um, and I graduated in 2015. And then I took a year out and following that year I applied to do translational cancer medicine which is a master's or a master of research so you get like MRes instead of MSc at King's College London. Now the course itself I've made plenty of videos on talking about my experience, applying to the course, what I wrote in my personal statement and all of that is on my channel so feel free to go and have a look if you're interested. But when I finished the course at the end of August I was hoping to find some sort of a research job because I want to go and study medicine um, postgraduate medicine so I needed to take a year to kind of work before making my application. So automatically after I finished my masters because I had worked in a lab for an entire year and I loved it. I mean, it was very difficult. I've got vlogs from that time period and I constantly look tired and stressed out. Hey everyone, so it's slightly later on in the same day that I filmed the intro to this video and I think it's around five o'clock, half five, something like that. And I am absolutely exhausted. Honestly, all of today while I was at the labs and doing the experiments that I was doing, I felt like hungover and even now I've just been lying here. Just, I ate some food to make myself feel a bit more human and I'm just watching a a podcast of Casey Neistat with uh, being interviewed by somebody I'm not sure what it is but I'll link it below and it just made me want to pick up my camera and vlog a little but when I look back I really did love doing my masters and I loved being in a lab so automatically I knew that my ideal job to do in this year would be some sort of a lab based job. Now I will link below some of the places that I looked at when I was looking for jobs because I know one of the most difficult things is finding out like where the jobs are being advertised and where you can actually find out what's being available or what is available sorry. So I'll leave some links below but just as a bit of um, an ad advice to you guys there are also a few non-conventional ways of finding out when jobs are or when they become available. So I'm going to tell you that now because I'll forget later. <laughs> LinkedIn is a really good place to get the chance to speak directly to people who are offering these jobs and finding out what kind of things are being advertised. Secondly, and I say this to everybody, do email people. I mean, I know it's a bit of a long shot because if you just randomly email somebody it's very rare that they will actually have a job. But you never know and I think you'd be kind of doing yourself a disservice but not by not at least trying to do that. So you could email university professors, you can email PIs, you can email head of labs or any kind of academic person who may work in the field that you're interested in and kind of just see what's available. Now I first saw the advert for this particular job in September 2017 and at this point as I said my masters had finished 
I had put down a deposit on a flat in London and I was literally just keeping my fingers crossed and taking this huge leap of faith um, by signing a 12 month contract in London and just hoping that I would find something. It's probably one of the biggest risks that I've ever taken up to this point in my life. And, you know, luckily, very luckily, it just so worked out. Anyway, so the application process was a little bit bittersweet because when I saw the advert and I read through the description, I was like, I, I love I love this. This is this is the kind of role that I would absolutely love to do. But much to my dismay, when I scroll down to the bottom of the page to see like when the deadline is, the deadline had passed, but weirdly enough, the advert was still left on the website. Now automatically I just figured that there's some kind of a technical error and they probably probably already have somebody and they just forgot to take the advert down. But I didn't want to take any chances, so I emailed the person whose lab it was, who is now my current supervisor. And weirdly enough, I already knew who she was because when I was doing my masters, she had given us a lecture like right at the very start of the year and I knew who she was and the general kind of work that she did. So I sent her a very eager message saying I've seen this job, I would love to do this, I graduated from King's and I think the work you do is really great, um, is this vacancy still open? Now again, much to my dismay, as soon as I sent the email, I get an autom automatic response saying, I will not be accessing my emails for the next like two weeks as I am on annual leave or something along those lines. And once again, I was sent into despair thinking, okay, great. So this thing, this application has already passed its date and the person who I'm trying to get in touch with isn't going to be checking their emails for two weeks. So. I should probably just say goodbye to it now. And then, I don't know what happened, the stars aligned or whatever, but that supervisor, she actually got back to me even though later on I found out that she was actually on a family vacation. And she got back to me and said that I'm going to get in touch with the website and tell them to open the application and really encourage me to apply. And obviously I was like so excited about this because it's one of those things where in my mind it just seemed so right it's in cancer, it's at King's, I I would I would love to do it so much. So I was just doing a little bit of a celebration, even though I knew that the job wasn't guaranteed at all. And this is a good point in the video for me to kind of give a little bit of a shout out and kind of just say how much I admire my supervisor's dedication to kind of keep on top of these things, even though she is on vacation. So my god, am I grateful for my supervisor's diligence. And so I filled in the application, I sent it off and not so long after that I got an email to say that I had been invited for an interview. So moving on to the interview itself. I received the email to say that I had been offered an interview and that I was invited on a particular day to come in. Now I had been asked to prepare a few things. One, just a few basic things about myself and you know what kind of previous work I've done and you know the standard interview questions. And the second thing was a three slide PowerPoint presentation to give about my past research experiences. So I had put together this presentation and on the morning of the interview I got there a little bit earlier and the interview consisted of a two-person panel, one of them being my current supervisor and the other person being a dermatology consultant who also does a lot of research on the side and collaborates quite heavily with my supervisor. I distinctly remember as I walked into the building, and bearing in mind I had done other interviews at the time and I never got this feeling with any of them, I remember walking into the building and thinking, I would be so upset if I didn't come to work here every day. It I honestly cannot explain it to you, it was just a feeling of I think this just feels right for me. I think the reason why I mostly felt like that is because I had done my masters at King's and I had become so attached to the lab and to the work I was doing for my masters that I, when I finished I was thinking that my god I would be quite sad not to ever have to come back here again so I think the stakes are quite high for me for this particular role. But you know, nothing was guaranteed at that point so I walked into the interview nervous, sat down and so it began. It all started with me sharing my presentation. I had made two slides talking about my previous work, one of them kind of giving an overview of lots of different things and one of them going into quite a lot of detail about one of the projects that I had done which was quite closely related to some of the work that I would be doing in this particular job and I just wanted to like emphasize 
empathize emphasize that point to be like look look I do I am interested in what you guys are interested in I promise and if I had to give you guys any tips that's something that I would definitely say is that if you go into an interview just make sure you show that you're interested in what they are also interested in I know it sounds like something that is a bit obvious but it goes without saying I think now okay I'm not really sure about the next part of what I'm about to tell you because as far as professionalism goes maybe this was a little bit questionable but the kind of person I am, I feel like I want to try and show a bit of my personality so people kind of know the, like what they're working with, basically. And on the last slide of my presentation, I had given some of like the skills and qualities and things that I had learned along my journey and that I would love to bring to the lab. And right at the bottom of the slide, I had a picture of a cake that I had baked. And I said, you know, if all else fails, I will bake good cakes and bring them to the lab. So... Uh, maybe that might affect your decision in a positive way and luckily they got my sense of humor but looking back at it now if you go and say something like that in a place where people don't really get like what you're trying to say it might come across a little bit juvenile but uh, luckily they liked cake and I do actually bake quite a lot in the lab so whew. now after the presentation part of the interview was over they asked me some general questions and a lot of them were quite um, like scenario based and talking about like ethics or like you know what would you do in this situation and this is definitely because part of the role was to do with seeing patients and working with patient data and patient samples and confidentiality and data protection and all of these kind of things are very very big when it comes to doing that particular role so a lot of the scenarios I was given was based on those but I was also asked a few questions about the research itself and what was quite interesting to me is that my current supervisor now asked me, you know, why do you want to come and become a research technician? Because you seem to have worked on a lot of like actual research projects and maybe somebody with your experience might want to go and pursue a PhD instead of coming and doing this role. And honestly, at this point, I didn't really want to let them know that I want to do this because I want to go in and do medicine. But the response that I gave them was equally true and that was that, you know, I do want to go and do a PhD at some point. I want to do medicine and I want to go into research and do a PhD at some point. But, and what I said was that I want to be able to be a technician and get to help lots of people on lots of different things and that will help me get an idea of what this kind of role, uh, what this kind of PhD would consist of or what that kind of PhD would consist of. Because obviously PhDs come in all shapes and sizes. You've got bioinformatics, you've got translational work, you've got basic science. And I said to them that I would really love the opportunity to learn a little bit about all of those and see what happens. And also admittedly at this point, I hadn't completely closed off the idea of not doing medicine and just going and doing a PhD. I was definitely teetering towards the side of medicine, but a PhD was always an option. I guess it still is if I continuously apply and fail to get into medicine. So the interview itself didn't take more than 30 minutes. And after all of this was over and they asked me, do you have any questions for us? I said that I really admired the fact that their lab was working on a clinical trial and one of the drugs that they had come up with is being tested in a phase one clinical trial and that I was very interested in this role. And it was amazing because I did not expect this at all but my supervisor said that if you are successful in getting this job and you are interested in that aspect of clinical trials then we can kind of mould the role so you can have a bit of involvement in that as well. So I guess this is one of those instances where, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get. So just remember that if you guys have got any interview that you go into, remember that you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you and you have to feel like you fit in with their team and their ethos in the same way that they would look at you and think, well, is this person suitable for us? And I walked away from that interview feeling pretty confident but still not really knowing what's going to happen and if I will ever come back to Guy's Hospital or what would be the next step but very very luckily I got a phone call a few days later to say that I'd got the job and I honestly could not tell you how over the moon I was. I still am, it's been like a year, it's been almost a year since I've been at this job and I'm still like buzzing about it. I can't tell you how much I enjoy it. So 
to kind of wrap this up and give you guys something to take away, as I said, I'm going to leave some links down below to a bunch of places where you can look for jobs. And when it comes to interview, just remember the most important thing is that you do come across genuine and you are and you act the way that you really are and not kind of put on an interview face or like an interview personality. A few other important things that I've learned is that when you go into an interview, I think it's very important for you to put across the point of um, I am here to do this for you. I am, I want to help you with this thing because I feel like a mistake that a lot of people make is they go into an interview and like, I think this would really help me too or I think I want to do this because it will give me and all of those things are valid, no question. But when you are speaking to you, people who are interviewing you, I think it's important for you to kind of let them know what you have to offer them. And that's something that I have definitely experienced. The other important thing is that, and this is also something I experienced in my interview, after the interview itself was over, my supervisor took me into the, into the lab and she introduced me to some of her lab members and she left me with them so I kind of had a bit of a chat to them and they, you know, took me around the tour. And this is something that people don't realise and that is that in itself is part of the interview experience. I was actually having a conversation with my supervisor about this recently and she was saying that there have been people in the past who perform like brilliantly in the interview and then when I kind of pass them over to one of uh, the members of my team, they kind of like their attitude completely changes and they're like, well, why am I talking to you? Like the interview is already over. And it's like, no, it's not. One of the main parts of an interview is to see how well you can integrate into the team. And if you have the attitude of, oh, well, I don't need to talk to you because I've already talked to like the supervisors. Oh my God, that's like one of the worst things. And the last thing that I want to add in terms of interviews is ask for feedback. You might not get the job, but when the interview is over, ask them, why did you select my application? Why did you give me an interview? And I think the answers that they give you are priceless because when I asked that question I got two major feedback. One of the things that they said they liked is they liked my kind of academic background if you may so the fact that I had done quite well in my degree and the fact that I had like done a master's and the thing that they said that I could probably improve was when I was writing my application to the job they said you could have made it more specific to the role you were applying for. So that's another handy tip that when you are writing your application make sure you go through it with a fine tooth comb and kind of make sure that the kind of things that you write are the kind of things that they ask you in the job profile and make sure they're quite closely linked. Similarly, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'm sorry it's a little bit lengthy, but I hope that you've kind of found this informative and to all of you who've been like asking about this for like a really long time, I'm sorry it was late, but I hope you can take away something from it. All right, my lovelies, so stick around for part two where I talk a little bit more about the actual job and what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And until next time, make sure to subscribe, take care, and I will see you next time.